All right, welcome to uh, another lesson for G uh, algebra. I was going to say geometry. Algebra 1. Uh, lesson 107, graphing absolute value functions. This is going to be an easy lesson. I'm going to graph a little bit on the board, and then I'm going to actually show you things in your calculator, which are pretty easy to do if you know what you're doing. And so, um, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, it does have four examples, but... Again, I'm not going to make it so repetitive. I'm going to give you general guidelines so that you can follow along and understand what we're talking about. But this is actually pretty easy. So let's actually get into the lesson of graphing absolute value inequality. Uh, not inequality, sorry. Absolute value functions. Okay, not inequality, functions. My bad. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so the first example is... Let's graph the parent function. The parent function means the function that is the simplest of that type. And so the simplest would be f of x equals absolute value of x. Okay, don't be like Joshua, 1 times 1. It's not 1 times 1. It's absolute value of x, right? And so and here what we're going to do is put x and y. So x and y. And I know that we have to do a lot of points. And I'm going to put actually 0 here, and then negative 1, negative 2, then 1 and 2. And that's what I'm going to do, right? And then I'm going to have uh, the axis, x and y axis. And I'm going to have uh, 1 and 2 for x. So 1, 2, then negative 1, negative 2 for x. And for y, let's see what we need. So the first thing that we're going to do is put negative 2 in here. Okay, so we put negative 2 here. What is the absolute value of negative 2? The absolute value of negative 2, meaning the distance from negative 2 to 0, is going to be 2 because distance can never be negative. So it's going to be 2. All right, so I'm going to put 1 and 2 here. I have to move that 1 because I know what's going to happen there. So negative uh, 2, 2 is going to be right here. Uh, with negative 1, the absolute value to negative 1 is 1, 0, 1, 2. I know this because, I, again, I just put negative 2 here and distance can never be negative and it's a distance to 0. So it's going to look something like... Oh, straight line. Beautiful straight line, obviously. Victory! So, uh, we have... Uh, v, kind of like a V shape, and that would be the absolute the graph for absolute value function, and it is like that. It has to be like that. It's something that bounces. It can never be negative. Um, well, it can be. Ne How to explain this? It will always look like this. It will never be bouncing downwards. I think, unless there's actually a negative in front of the absolute value sign, okay? And that is example four. But for now, think about it that it always is going to look like a bounce. It's gonna look like a straight bounce. By the way, the bounce could be narrower or it could be wider, all right? So it could be wider, it could be narrower, but it's going to look like a bounce, okay? Uh, and yes, there's actually the upward bounce, but we will talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but that is the first part of of this lesson, of lesson 107, absolute value functions. All right, so before we move on, I have to uh, tell you that all absolute values will have a vertex. So um, it is um, just like the quadratic for uh, quadratic functions that they have a vertex, but this one, obviously, it's, it's, not, it's not the same. It's not uh, rounded. It's not like a parabola. So it is like um, a bounce. And so the vertex is going to be... Uh, is going to be h, k. h is going to be for the x values, and k is going to be for the y values. And you have to leave it h, k, all right? It has to be h, k. And so it's going to be x, y. Um, that is very important to know because what happens is that when we see, and in the next part you will see that it tells you, okay, you're going to have something like it's y equals absolute value of plus minus k, and sometimes you're going to have y equals x h, like that, minus h. Absolute value, not 1. So um, 
H is going to affect the X. So the H means that we're going to move the vertex to the right or the left according to how many we have in H. And for the K, we're going to move it up or down according to what we have for K. So K always has to be positive. So when K is positive, positive K, it means that it will go up the amount of K. If K is negative, the graph will go down, the vertex, the vertex will go down. Okay, so the vertex, the point where it bounces is going to go down according to K. If it's up, it's going to go, if it's positive, it's going to go up. If it's negative, it will go down. What about H? For H, um, when H is over here, negative, it will be moved to the right. But when it is positive, it will be moved to the left. Because what you have to understand is that H um, in here will always be written as negative. And so, uh, yeah, be careful with that. It's not that the negative H will move it to the right. Is that because this is always negative? Uh, negative and positive is negative, and negative and negative is positive. So that's what I'm trying to tell you here, and that's how we explain the the the, the whole table in page 721. Okay, so let's move on to example two. Okay, so in the next example, we're supposed to graph this one, and because this one is outside the absolute value one, the absolute value uh, symbol. If you go back to what we just said, I said that this is going to be k, and k is going to affect. Um, if it goes up or down, right? It's going to affect whether or not it goes up and down. And so, because I know that this is k and it's negative, I think that the vertex is going to go down from the parent function, the original function, by 2. How do we do this? By, obviously, uh, having the table. So, y and x. And again, I need to have a couple of... A couple, no. I have to have at least 5. And I... I mean, the truth is you have to have at least two, but I want to have uh, at least at least three, I mean. But I, I want to have at least uh, five. So right here I have my points, negative two, negative one, not weird Asian symbol. So negative two, negative one, uh, zero, and one, zero, one, and two, right? So um, let's... Let's do, uh, let's do what we have to do, which is put this negative 2 is not yx. Wow. It's xy. Getting a little bit tired. That's what happens when I get a little bit tired. I start making a lot of mistakes because uh, recording this video obviously takes a lot of me. Uh, and that's what I'm telling you. This is a lot of work. I'm putting a lot of work. And so if you guys are not doing the work, I'm going to fail you. Just because I have to do work and you don't have to, that uh, is totally unfair to me. And so if I'm doing work and you're not doing work, easy for me to fail you. I don't understand any other logic and how we're going to be doing this. So, your call. So, we have the negative 2 here. And we put the negative 2. So, absolute value of negative 2 is going to be positive 2. 2 minus 2 is going to be 0. What about negative 1? Absolute value of negative 1 is going to be 1. 1 minus 2 is going to be negative 1. Absolute value of 0 is going to be negative 2. Absolute value of 1 is going to be negative 1. And absolute value of 2 is going to be 0. So, if we do the table, if we do the graph based on the table, x and y, we're going to have 1 and 2, negative 1, negative, I mean 2 and 1. I don't know why I put negative. The negatives go here. And then we have a negative 1 and negative 2. And so it's going to be here that we put our first point, 0, 2. And then 1, negative 1 is going to be right here. And 0, 2, and 0, negative 2. Or negative 2, sorry. Negative 2, 0, and 2, 0 go there. And then negative 1, negative 1 here. And so in here, wow, uh, it's supposed to go this way.
Um, I guess I can move my one. There you go. I moved my one. Uh, and so it's right there. And for here, it's going to be this way. And boom. I told you from the beginning, you see negative two. It went down by negative two. And that's what you have to understand. That every time we have a number outside the absolute value, it will switch the vertex up or down according to what the overall value is. So la now let's move on to the second part of example number two. All right, the second part of example number two for lesson 107 will be absolute value of x plus three. So this function of the absolute value of x plus three, because it's inside the absolute value symbol, I know that this is h, and h is supposed to be negative. So because it's positive three, I know that it will be to the left three units. Again, how do we do it? With a table, x and y. I'm not gonna make the same mistake I made before. Yay, I'm learning. And so, Uh, again, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Those are really good numbers usually to be able to do um, the table. But I just realized that I made a mistake. And my mistake was that I know my vertex is going to be a negative 3. So all these points are going to keep on going up and up and up and up and up. And so I need to actually find points to the left of negative 3 and to the right of negative 3 for the x value. So... I have to rewrite my values of x for my for my table. And so it would be negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Those are the values that I want. I want from negative 5 to negative 1. And so negative 5. Uh, negative 5 plus 3 will be, uh, negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2, but absolute value of negative 2 is going to be 2. Negative 4, negative 4 plus 3 is going to be negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is going to be 1. Negative 3, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Uh, negative 2, negative 2 plus 3 is going to be negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. And then negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. So in here, I have my y axis, my x axis. And uh, I drew my y way too close to the, my table. You see what I mean? You have to. Okay, so something weird happened. Uh, it stopped recording halfway through it. Uh, I think I was doing the table. Uh, and so I'm just going to explain what I did. Because I don't know how to do it again. And the problem was that my phone got uh, filled. My SD card um, got filled. And what happens is that I didn't know that I had to empty the trash every time I do a video. So now I know that um, in the phone, the trash folder doesn't actually empty. It just keeps filling up with stuff and so if it gets too full obviously it will stop recording um, but uh, it wasn't even the phone memory it was the micro SD card uh, and that's why I love uh, certain Androids because you can actually put even more um, external memory into it not external memory sorry external storage memory is RAM uh, rapid access memory and no phone you can actually upgrade the memory you just have to upgrade the whole phone anyway that's neither here nor there so as i was saying we have to find points to the left and to the right of negative three and so we did that and i just did the table negative five plus three it's going to be uh negative two absolute value of negative two is going to be two Negative four, negative four plus three is gonna be negative one. Absolute value of negative one is gonna be one. Uh, then we have negative three, zero, and then we have negative two, one. Uh, negative two, one is gonna be here. And so I actually did the whole thing. And as I was telling you, this is supposed to be H, right? And so I told you the vertex, and I'm probably gonna leave this for next example, is gonna be H, K. Remember, H, 
uh, is going to be negative for it to be quote unquote positive. And for K, it does go alongside the sign. So H and K has opposite signs in it. And so um, the whole point of doing all of this is because it's really important for you to understand that um, the vertex is the one key to an absolute value uh, function is the vertex. So we know that if the vertex is this way, then it could flip or anything, it could happen. And so that's it. So let me just go into example three and then we'll go into example four, which is the flipping of the um, vertex. I might not actually uh, show you how to graph ver uh, example three on the board. I might actually show you how to do it in the calculator. So let's get into it. All right, so in this example, we have x plus, no, this is not it. Absolute value of x plus 3 is not it. It's absolute value of x minus 4 plus 1. Okay, so uh, minus 4 plus 1. So that is going to be my vertex. Not minus 4, but my vertex, my new vertex is going to be 4, 1. That's what I think it is. So again, I told you I was going to show you in the calculator. So I'm going to put my calculator right here in front of the uh, camera. I hope you guys are seeing it, right? And so uh, I have absolute value. So I'm going to clear it so that you guys understand how I did it. So in here, I went to uh, math, which is the key underneath alpha is math. So I put math. And then I move to the right and it says abs. The first one says abs. You see how it says abs. So I press enter and it automatically puts it into the Y1, right? And so then I put X minus four. Then I put the right key, the right arrow key. And I put plus one, right? So in here you see absolute value of X minus four, uh, plus one, right? So then we're going to assume, uh, assume six, which is assume standard, and it is going to graph. Oh, look at that. It graphed. And so how are we going to find the vertex? Well, the vertex we can find in many ways, but I'm going to do it the easiest way. I'm going to put the little uh, table. And so to get table, I get second graph, and it's a table. And so I said that my vertex is at four, one. So if I go at four, look at that, four, one. Uh, let's see, are you looking at the four? It's kind of weird. Four, one. Uh, in the bottom, you can see x equals four, y, one equals one. And then if you go up and down, it's different. So once you actually do this in your calculator, you'll see what I mean. But it's pretty easy, and, and the vertex is actually four, one. So let's actually move on to when we flip the, the graph. Uh, because of something that happens, okay? So let's move on to example number four. Okay, so before we actually get into example one, I mean four, I don't know why I said one, we have f of x equals a absolute value of x. So this a is going to be outside the absolute value. And what it means is this. If the a is positive, then the graph is going to go upwards. Like um, in a parabola, uh, the A determines whether it's going to be happy face or, or sad face. The same thing happens here. So positive means upwards, uh, negative means downwards. And so the other thing that is very important is that if A is less than one, less than one means if it's a fraction or if it's a decimal that is less than one, meaning 0 0.5, 0 0.8, one third, one half, something like that. What happens is that's going to be narrower. What do I mean by narrower? It's actually going to close upon itself. It's going to be way closer, kind of like making this literal almost V. And so it, it becomes really, really, really narrow. The smallest the number is, the narrower it is. But if it's greater than one, it will become wider. Okay, it will become like wider, like it will almost touch sometimes the x axis. And so that's something very important. And again, because I showed you in your calculator, I want to show you again how to do it in calculator. 
if you already know how to do this, because I think this is actually pretty easy. And so let's actually do it in the calculator. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually going to go back into the book with a calculator like I did uh, once. So let's get into that. Okay, so for example four, uh, we're going to check out what how the graph would look like. And so before I even graph it, and I know it's right here, but I'm not going to really be looking at this. I'm going to be just looking at what it says here. So it says um, uh, f of x equals 3 absolute value x, right? And so what I, I'm going to do there is I'm going to write that in my calculator, and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. So I need to actually write it first. Okay, so right there. You see, it's pretty much the same thing as in here. And so now that we have that, um, I'm going to know that it's going to open upwards, that it is going to be uh, opening. No, that it's going to become wider. And so something that I might have actually made a mistake before now that I'm looking at it is that it is supposed to be the, the greater this number, A, right? The greater A is, the narrower it's going to get. And the smaller A is, the wider it's going to get. So what I wrote on the board before, it's not right. So... If you are not looking at the at the video and paying attention, you're going to miss that because what I wrote was wrong. Maybe it's a test, huh? It's a good test right there. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should upload videos and like be like giving you questions, and then uh, people will be like, "Whoa, what are you doing? Why are you answering random questions?" Like in the comment section or something of the video in YouTube, and then that way I'll know that you guys are watching them and that you're paying attention. Maybe I should do that. That would be great. Anyway, uh, so in here you'll see that this is the graph and it is really close to the graph that I have here. If I move my book, it's really close. And so because it's three, it becomes start to become narrower. So uh, if you look at my fingers, it becomes narrower. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. It becomes narrower because of that. And so that is example uh, 4a. And then for example 4b, it's going to be something like this, right? Negative 4x negative 4 absolute value of x, that's what I have right there. And so I'm going to graph, and look at that. It's actually opposite, it's actually um, reflected upon the uh, x-axis, and so it means that it's uh, opening downwards, and that's what it looks like, and it's really close to what it says right here in the book, right? As you can see right here. And so finally, let me move you a little bit to look at example 4C. We have negative 0 0.2 absolute value x. Negative 0 0.2 absolute value of x, like this, right? And so I'm going to graph it, and you see, because 0 0.2 is really a small number, it opens up wider. So what I wrote on the board is the opposite of what it is. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, if you have any questions, I will write or something, but let me know if you get this far into the video and if you have any questions about it. Uh, you can comment in here or you can comment in the um, Google Classroom where I put uh, videos. You can actually uh, ask me questions about that, but that's pretty easy. And so this is going to be uh, it for lesson 107. So I'll see you tomorrow with uh, lesson 108, which is going to be the last one for my for our third week together of doing this. So uh, yeah, um, have a good one.